The next decision rule is called the discounted payback rule. And the discounted payback rule was created in order to solve a few of the problems that are known to exist with the normal payback rule. The first problem that we know with the normal payback rule is that it doesn't account for the time value of money, meaning we simply subtract the, the future value, the, the actual value of the cash flows in order to see how long it takes to pay back instead of subtracting the present value of the cash flows. And the discounted payback rule tries to correct for this. So the difference is going to be that we first calculate the present value of each cash flow. So the present value of this first cash flow has a future value of 63,120. It has an N, one year in the future. IY is our discount rate, and our discount rate is 12% per year. So we compute the present value of this cash flow, and we get 56,357. I take the present value of the second cash flow in the same way, only my N is now 2, and I get 56,441. And I take the present value of my third cash flow, where my N is now 3, and I get 64,840. Now, I do exactly the same thing that I did with the payback period. So I find out how long it takes to pay back the initial cost on a discounted basis, meaning using the present values of the cash flows instead of the future values. Then, I decide whether we take the project based on the payback period rule, or sometimes an alternative discounted payback period rule. But here we'll just use two years. So if this project doesn't pay back in two years, we'll reject the project. Otherwise, the mechanics are the same. So start with your initial cash flow, which is the initial cost, $165,000. And then add the present value of the cash flows instead of the future values. So add 56,357. This is the present value of the first year's cash flow. I still have to pay back $108,643. So I add the present value of the second cash flow, and that's 56,441. I add these two values and I still find that I need to pay back 52,202. So I add the present value of the final cash flow here, 64,840. And again, we see that at some point during year three, the present values of my future cash flows will equate to the initial cost. And I'll get 12,627. So I can see that it takes two full years plus some part of year three. Just like with the payback problem, we find the proportion of the third year that it takes to pay back by dividing the amount that we still need to pay back in year three by the present value of the cash flow that we earn in year three. And that gives us 0.8052. So 80% of the third year goes by before we pay back the project. So the total discounted payback is 2.8052 years which is more or less two years and 10 months. However, part two is, do we accept the project based on a payback rule of two years? And here we reject. This project takes longer than two years. And the discounted payback rule is the same as the payback rule. We reject any project that takes longer than our arbitrary cutoff. Now the thing to notice about the, the discounted payback rule is that we've done something very unusual here. Right? So I want to take you back to the net present value rule. Net present value is equal to the sum 
of the present values of the future cash flows. minus the initial cost. Now what do we do here? Notice that we added the present values of the future cash flows and subtracted the initial cost. And if you go back to the net present value problem that we worked, or just recalculate the net present value of this problem, you'll see that 12,627 is exactly what the net present value is. We've done the same thing, only we've made our life harder to do it. Not only that, we know that the net present value rule, which is the best rule, specifically says we should take any project with a net present value greater than zero. And based on the discounted payback rule, we have rejected a project, which in the same process we have proven to be a good one. And this is the main problem with the discounted payback rule. It is much harder to compute than the normal payback because I've got to calculate all the present values. I've got to make assumptions about risk, and I've got to um, think about how the project is going to change over time. All the, all the same assumptions that I need to make for the net present value rule. But it gets rid of all the benefits of the payback rule, which is that it's easy. It doesn't require all those assumptions, and we can do it on the back of an envelope. So we sort of fail to see the forest for the trees. For this reason, I really don't like the discounted payback rule, but it is potentially something that you'll see in the future. So it's something we need to be aware of.